kind of a fact of life the moment you start stripping, cleaning, rebuilding components, particularly when you're using materials like aluminium, when you start reassembling, or even when you take it apart, you're going to get damage to the threads. This one is quite chewed up at the top, she looks alright, a bit further down, but there's no way, no matter how hard you try, you're ever going to get that bolt to go down straight, true, and easily. Truth is, if I try and do this thing up now, I'm just going to ruin the component and it'll be game over. Okay, this is quite a simple little piece, but nevertheless, if you're dealing with a large piece of equipment and you come across something like this, we need a solution. So let's fix it. These kind of kits have been around for years. Um, we've got a couple of examples here. I've got a M8 by 1.25 thread insert. Here I've got an Imperial. Uh, this is a UNF, 38 UNF. The idea is basically the same. What we have in the kit is a load of these little springs. So here's a couple of the springs. They are the correct internal dimension for the thread. So this one's the UNF. And the external dimension is the correct pitch to enable it when it's screwed into the newly cleaned and retapped hole and produce an internal thread which is exactly correct. Normally stainless steel wire, um, they're produced in a diamond cross section, so they're not round like a normal spring, they're diamond shaped. So you've got the internal and external threads on the actual spring. And at the bottom here, you can just see the little drive tang which allows us to install it into the repair piece that we have. So although you can buy the the little inserts individually on their own you need to buy the complete set if you're going to be able to do a decent repair we have in here a full kit of tools which will allow us to remake the thread uh, initially we have the drill which is the specific size to drill out the existing threads that we've got which are damaged and it's the correct size for the special tap which comes with the set these will be made to suit the final internal diameter of the thread um, once you've installed the spring insert. So it's critical you use the correct tap when you put these things together. We have an installation tool which has the little groove in the top here which allows you to engage with that little tang. So if we put the insert in, engaging with the little tang, you can see there, not that it's in focus, but you can see that that is engaging in there and will allow us to twist that down into the hole. And finally we've got just a little steel punch and that's job is to knock that driving pin off the bottom of the spring once we've got it installed into its new thread. First thing we're going to do just get the correct bolt for the uh, finished thread and we're just going to make sure the pitch is the same so just lay the bolt gently in the tap and that should exactly match the pitch of the teeth on the tap that comes in the insert box. It'll be labelled, in this instance this is labelled as M8, but if we were to measure it, it'd be quite a lot bigger than M8, which makes it quite a strange tap. It's always worth just checking to make sure you've got the correct pitch, because once you put that insert in, it's very difficult then to change it to the correct one if you've got it wrong. So the manufacturer has very kindly given us a set of um, pictorial instructions, which is simply drill, tap, install, break the tank. So the first thing being drilling, how we go about drilling is really key. Yes, we could use the cordless drill. We could put the drill bit in there. We could just drill that out and that will work. And sometimes when you're dealing with a really large piece of machinery, large component, that's the only option that you've got. However, if you have a portable piece of equipment like this one with the damaged thread in it, then what we are always aiming to do is make sure we are drilling that hole um, as perpendicular to the base as is possible, assuming that was the original design. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to actually do this um, using a pillar drill so that I know when I drill the hole, it's in exactly the correct position and at exactly the right angle. So I'm going to use the mill basically because I've got slightly better light here than I've got at the pillar drill. 
no other reason than that. Uh, this mini mill works perfectly well as a pillar drill. It's a bit more accurate as well. I'm going to do a quick and nasty setup, nothing fancy. So first thing I'm going to do, I put the drill in the Jacob's chuck, nice and tight. Then I positioned it so that it definitely sits in between um, the bed, so it sits in the T-slot groove. So I know that the drill is not going to cause any damage to the milk. I can then lift that up out of the way and I can position my piece. I've just laid a clamp in here, it's the standard finger clamp. It's actually an apprentice made finger clamp, nothing fancy. And I'm just going to roughly locate that and then actually let the drill, let the 118 degree point of the drill just jiggle that around a little bit until it's nicely centered. And once I've got that in position, I'm just going to move the clamp, not lifting the drill at all. There, I didn't. And I'm just going to let the clamp come in, lift that up, and then a little bit on the back. Importantly, as always, when you're setting up on a milling machine, all of the loading of the clamp is biased to the front. If you were to put a spirit level across here, you would find it is definitively pointing down towards the work and not towards the back. So that's now securely clamped. I know it's not going to drill through the bed. All I need to do, turn the machine on, drill the hole out. I like a little bit of cutting fluid just to ease it through. Don't need to go mad. Pretty lightweight hole we're drilling, only taking out a few millimetres. Set the drill up. And just bring that in. Slightly uneven cut because it's just cutting out the threads really. You can obviously peck to remove any swirl, although with this, the edge of material removed is so slight that it's not really necessary. So we've got the hole drilled. When it comes to tapping the hole, again we can take it out and put it in the vise, do it by hand, and that's perfectly fine. Um, it is one of the areas you're most likely to get wrong. It's very easy to end up with a tap which is crooked, um, and then you end up with a crooked thread, which was part of the problem in the first place. So in this instance, and you may have a machine to do this, I'm just going to tighten the tap just by hand in the chuck. Um, I've turned the mill off, so there's no chance of it springing to life here at all. Um, obviously you'd be using a pillar drill for this. Applying a little bit of cut, cutting oil, again just to make sure it's a nice clean cut. I'm just going to bring this tap down into very light contact. No more than that. And I just, with one hand, just put a finger on the actual drive to lower the tap in. No pressure whatsoever. And then by hand, I'm just going to twist the tap whilst applying a little bit. Not, not quite tight enough. I'll nip that up a little bit more. That's it. So just a little bit of finger pressure. And what you'll actually feel is the handle that, that drives the tap down will move you keep going and after a few turns I'm just going to turn it backwards just to clear the swarf you'll find you'll probably go a little bit further you'll notice the tap is slipping in the chuck well that's fine I don't want to drive it right the way down I just want to get it started I want a few turns on there so there's just a few beginning threads starting in my hole which I know because I'm set up on the mill I know that this is perfectly perpendicular to that face and I'm going to have a nice accurately tapped hole. So now without releasing anything, without lifting the chuck up at all, I'm just going to undo the chuck, remember it's not tight, make sure it's well loose and then we can just pull the chuck out of the way and leave our tap nicely started in the hole. Hand tapping wrench And sometimes we can use, you'll notice there's a little hole in the top of the tap. Sometimes we can use a little spring-loaded support that sits back up in our chuck and allows us to keep it centred. This should be fairly straightforward because we've got it nicely started. So I'm just going to nice and gently start tapping. A few turns forward, 
and then start clearing, turn backwards. And we just work our way down. And we're through. And there is our newly tap hole. At this stage there'll be no hardship in taking it off the mill doing it in a vice. I'm going to leave it here uh, simply because it's a nice stable location in which to film from no other reason than that. So our insert sit in the installation tool. Now we've got this collar here that's got a little grub screw which allows us to actually set it so you can get the correct insertion depth so that the so that the insert is installed to the correct depth so you could basically I would just pretty much lay it on here undo the collar and let it drop down to the correct depth and that would give me roughly the right amount of spacing to install uh, the insert I'm not going to do it here because the one thing it will do is get a little bit in the way um, of you actually seeing how the insert goes in so I'm going to leave it set artificially very very high but you can set that to make sure you get the correct depth and um, I, I must admit personally I've always done them by eye I've always found that to be just as easy to do so all we need to do is just get the installation tool with the insert on it lined up in the hole and just like you would when you're installing a bolt we just start to turn and what we'll find is it's, there we go. a little bit stiff initially but then it quite easily with very little twisting force goes in. It feels a bit weird because there's a little bit of springy give to it. I probably should have taken it off of the mill and cleaned it which is why it was a bit stiff there. But we're nearly in. Now this is one of the danger spots when you're doing these installations. We could leave it here like so. When we look at it in there it doesn't look too bad. When you take the tool out you can see you've actually got the top of the spring just hanging out. And because it's not supported in the threads, it's not even in the right position to accept a bolt. It'll also get in the way of any sealing faces that we might have on here. And it's a weak point. We could grab hold of that and actually uncoil the spring. So what we need to do is get it in further. You can actually watch and you can see the coil disappearing and it just clicked in place. And now you can see that's fallen and it's sitting underneath the surface height and it's held in place in one of the threads. Just going to go a little bit more. Yeah, properly dropped in place. Ideally, I like to see a couple of full threads um, above the insert just to make sure it's right the way fully in. But that depends a lot upon the application. You may not be able to do that. That will now allow us to um, get a little chamfer tool in there, just deeper that hole give us a nice lead in so that we haven't got any sharp edges. Standard pin punch just goes in there, this comes with the kit. It's going to hold it in place, take a hammer. You need to be quite brave with this, it's not little taps, you need to line up and give it a stout blow so that we get a nice shearing action and that will have snapped off the little drive tang in exactly the right place so that we now have a clean through hole that's got a nice strong thread inside and just to confirm if we now take our M8 bolt it screws in there really nice and smoothly and we have a repair thread which is perfectly aligned and ready for installation these are really high quality, these inserts. They're very, very worthwhile getting to know and understand. It's not uncommon for aluminium fixtures when they're used in machinery to actually have this kind of insert installed in the factory as part of the production because aluminium threads just simply are not strong enough. So any piece of aluminium that you have to remove and replace on a piece of machinery on a regular basis, inspection covers, etc., can be well, well worthwhile using these inserts because it makes longevity for them so, so much better.